love you, Pa. God bless Dave. I love you and God loves you too. Love you and God loves you too. Yeah, give me a little usher. Uh, growing up in Harlem, I mean, it was tough. You know, it was during the 90s and yeah, I dropped it. There's a time in every young person's life where the need to, to be down, to be accepted, you know, it, it overrides everything. Timberlands had just made like the new kind of like half cut boots called the Chuckers, and um, I wanted a pair. I was going to school every day, but you know, after school, I was going to a different type of school where they were, um, where they were actually teaching me, you know, the street game, the, the hustling game, you know, how to sell drugs, you know, what you need to do, you know, where you need to go, and you know, I was learning all those things. There are a group of young people who uh, were with us in the early years, uh, and James is one of them. Uh, we were losing the battle. When James was uh, a teenager, uh, Harlem was a place that uh, everybody was trying to get out of as quickly as possible. And so he grew up as a kid, uh, hearing about friends who were killed and uh, who went to jail as just a regular routine expectation of what it meant to grow up in this community. Uh, so part of the Harlem Children's Zone Community Center is what we call our satellite sites. I was going to Brandeis High School. There was a lot of gang activity, a lot of, a lot of fights in the school and things of that nature, and I was scared. I remember a couple of afternoons having to run home from school, you know, because Someone was chasing me, trying to, trying to rob me. You know, you might want to call it divine intervention. You know, a lady in my building, she said, hey, you know, my job is looking for some nice young men to come and work and get an opportunity, you know. I want you to call this number and I want you to be interviewed to work with what was then called the Reeland Centers for Children and Families. What's going on? Okay. Sir. And I got a job. The first time I saw James, he was a kid. He was so earnest. Fix your collar. Why well, I got to fix your collar every day? He was so serious. And I don't care what you told him to do. Uh, if you said, James, look, I need you to move that table, he moved that table better than anyone else you could ever ask to move the table. Is he on his way home from school? Or? There was all these different people, all these different stakeholders who had a different responsibility, you know, pitching in to give me, you know, the help and encouragement that I needed. At the same time, you know, we had trips, you know, so we went to see, you know, foreign movies and, you know, um, we went to, you know, uh, Shakespeare in the Park and, you know, we, we got to do a lot of things that was like, oh, hold on, wait, this is a job. But it's like, hold on, wait, this is not a job, it's a program, I don't know which one. You know, the Harlem Children's Zone is uh, an approach that is not about trying to save individual children, but actually trying to turn a community around. You have to work with kids when they need you. And so when do kids need you? They need you during the school day, yes. They need you after school. But if you're in high school, they're gonna need you between eight and 10. Uh, it really starts very early on with making sure uh, our parents know everything about brain development. And then we want our families to eat right. So we make sure that uh, we have healthy meals and we prepare the meals for all the kids in our school. Uh, we make sure that there are social workers if kids have issues. Uh, we have safety nights. And it's the night like the night in shining armor uh, that stand on the street corner so our kids know there's a safe corridor that they can walk and the adults are out. But we also start with children at birth and stay with those kids. Through high school, get those kids into college, and then stay until they graduate from college. One of the questions people ask me all the time is, you know, uh, is your work replicable? How do I do? Could you find people in other communities who could do this work? And uh, what you have to have is a group of folk that have just, just not the skill level, but have the passion of a James. Did you get homework? This is not
All right, this is the thing that, I'm, that I want to do. This is the thing that I have to do. Come on, keep it up. Keep those hands up. Don't let them, don't let them fall. I'm working with kids, I'm teaching kids. It was what it was my it was my like it was my LeBron James thing, you know, like I was like the LeBron James working with kids. You know homework? That's what it's about. It's about um, doing the work but making sure that it's not just giving people fish, it's teaching them how to fish and then coming back and saying, Okay, now you gotta teach the little ones how to fish so that way they can feed themselves and continue to go on until Harlem, America is the most beautiful place to live ever. And that when that day comes, you know, I'll say, all right, there's no more for me to do. I'm going to sit down in this chair and finish playing video games, you know.